giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now. FRC is produced in partnership with Stryker. Discover why so many first alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers. Visit careers.striker.com forward slash first to view openings, internships, and co-ops tailored to those who are in first. That's careers.stryker.com forward slash first. And by the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And also viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to Infimidation. Tonight, we have the pleasure of hosting two guests from Team 67, the Heroes of Tomorrow, but also known as the Hot Team out of Highland. 67 was winners of the 1st of Michigan Milford District this season and came in at number 32 on the final FRC Top 25 slash 40 rankings and 8th in the final 1st of Michigan rankings. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Nick Jr. And I'm Dan. Dan is here. Okay, so uh, before we get going, we do have a new host from the FIM team joining us tonight. Uh, Dan, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Dan. I've been involved in FRC since 2015. I was on FRC 1711 for four of those years. I'm currently a student at Michigan Technological University. I'm looking forward to continuing to help out. Yeah, thanks, Dan, and we are uh, glad to have you on board. So uh, moving forward, as I stated earlier, we do have uh, two guests from Team 67, the hot team, joining us tonight, and we will have them introduce themselves. Uh, Adam, let's start with you. Sure. Adam Freeman. Uh, I was on the hot team from 2005 to 15 as a mentor and drive coach, and then spent uh, four years down in Texas working for IFI, and got the opportunity to come back and mentor HOT one more year uh, for this year, or this shortened year. So got an opportunity to come down and just uh, work with the engineering team and help out as much as possible. Yeah, sweet. Uh, thanks, Adam and Alyssa. Sure, um, I'm a junior on the HOT team. This is my third year on the team, and um, I do CAD, work on assembly and machining. Awesome. Sounds uh, like a lot of fun. So uh, again, thank you both for coming on. So um, kind of moving forward, uh, we're going to go into a few discussion topics on some stuff that you guys kind of gave us. Uh, I know that overall 67 has been one of the strongest teams in the state of Michigan. Uh, I'm going to kind of go over some statistics here. Uh, 45 overall blue banners between chairmans and winning. Um, Hall of Fame status gaining in 2005. 31 district and regional wins. Four state championships. Seven Einstein appearances and three world championships, and won the Milford District this year. So, um, again, 67 was on track for another great year. Um, if this, uh, if the statistics here don't speak volumes, um, to be honest, I'm not sure what does. Um, they are one of the four Hall of Fame teams uh, in the state of Michigan, like I stated earlier. So, uh, with that being said, let's kind of go ahead and jump into some robot discussion. So, and if, um, what? Anything got, you got anything to add, Dan? And if you have any questions, remember you can put them in the chat or tag first updates now for them to be answered closer to the end of the show. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, going into a little bit of thing, um, I don't know if Alyssa or Adam, you guys want to take this one first, but uh, can you guys talk about um, your kind of design philosophy this season? Uh, what made you guys go the route that you did, you know, going low versus tall and whatnot? So um, go ahead and start us off. Go ahead, Alyssa. All right. Um, so every year we start off with kickoff. And as a team, we meet together and evaluate the game and decide what our priorities were going to be. So um, our priorities list this year um, we decided that we wanted to be a short bot, and this is mostly because we wanted to be able to utilize the control, the trench run, as we thought this would be an um, undefended area and allow for us to score the maximum amount of points with the least amount of resistance. And so in doing that, we had to modify our design. So originally when we were considering designing our robot, we had um, decided to investigate um, one of our previous robots, our 2012 robot. And so... Um, we had our very similar shooter where it's um, fed from the top with a slight gravity feed and where it's fed to our shooter wheel. Okay, sweet. Dan, you got anything to add? Uh, I think that the big thing that we were trying to go for this year was um, just trying to keep the, the design as simple as possible. I think a couple of 
you know, the years past, the uh, last couple of years, we, we kind of overreached on um, trying to make a, a stronger robot and not just one that we, we felt we could build um, ourselves effectively. Um, that's one of the things that, we, that we've done is, is not always build the, the number one robot in the world, but the one that we think we can build uh, that will work well for us and um, that we'll be able to execute uh, within the time that we had. Uh, luckily, we didn't have a bag this year, so we were able to extend that a little bit and needed uh, every minute that we could um, to get there. But we felt good about where the robot was going and what it was what it was going to be. Unfortunately, we couldn't full, fully realize everything that we wanted with it. But um, you know, we we did what we we meant to do at at Milford and and felt good going forward from there. So. Yeah, absolutely. So um, kind of going into design, and I know Alyssa touched a little bit, you guys kind of um, followed your 2012 robot and kind of grabbed some things off of that. So, um, you know, going into that, were there any real specific humps that you guys had to come over? Um, were you guys worried about going over the rendezvous point and that kind of thing when t discussing the drivetrain? So uh, anything on that? Yeah, so I remember at the very beginning of the season, we had decided to run an eight-wheel tank drive um, with four inch Colson wheels. And it was a concern if we could hit, um, if we were going to be able to clear the rendezvous point. So we ended up actually going up to a five inch Colson wheel. And there was a little bit of debate of whether we should go to pneumatic wheels or continue with the Colsons and we stuck with the Colsons. Um, so that was with our drivetrain and just making sure that we could clear the rendezvous point. Um, Adam, I remember that there was some uh, <laughs> discrepancies. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we built the, the initial chassis with the four inch wheels and just started playing around rolling it up to that that bar you know it looked it looked really steep and looked like it was gonna be really abusive so we were we we're kind of second guessing ourselves and we actually redesigned the, like Alyssa said redesigned the chassis for five inch wheels uh, just so we could get a little more um, attack angle on that on that bar at the end of the day um, you know with all the with all the swerve drives and everything else it was go over it we probably would have been okay with four inch wheels um but you know we felt better that we could we could hit it at full speed uh if we if we needed to and not just completely destroy the chassis um, yeah yeah absolutely so i guess um what was the decision behind you know going with the four inch versus uh just going with the six inch knowing that you would have the ground clearance to clear that six inch is a really hard to package in our our chassis design. Okay. Um, we really like the we really like the eight wheel drive because that that leaves you four wheels uh, in contact all the time. So we got a nice flat base for shooting from uh, versus you know going to a six inch and and then having the rock there and trying to deal with that. So it just made it a little simpler um, for our chassis design. We could we could essentially use one that we we've, we've used for a long time um, by going with uh, with the smaller wheels. So. That, that kind of pushed us away from the, the six inch pneumatic wheels. And then from there, um, you know, we, we felt pretty good with the four inch wheels until, until we saw that bar for real. Uh, I think there was a change at some point with the, with the way the rules were written and there was like another 16th or eighth of an inch and that, you know, you wouldn't think that much would, would make that big of a difference. But, you know, as we were it rethinking does. it, it just, it just all of a sudden seemed that much worse than uh, it was going, than we thought it would be. So uh, luckily, we were we were able to redesign, fit the five inch wheels in there, and you know I think we were better off for it. Um, maybe made the the chassis a little faster, and although with those the the Falcon 500s, it was it was more than as fast as it needed to be. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we ever drove that robot at its top speed. It, it was crazy fast. Yeah, we were planning to actually slow it down. Um, just to, to help with some other issues that we were having. Oh, okay. So um, kind of going from, uh, you know, your uh, early prototypes and whatnot, and um, just, you know, like Alyssa said, looking at your 2012 shooter, um, kind of what evolved to your final robot design and uh, that kind of thing. So go ahead, Alyssa. That's so your... Out with a prototype very similar to our 2012 shooter. It was tested and it worked really well. So um, that design pretty much stayed consistent. And um, so a lot of what we did that I found interesting going from prototypes enough, we did a lot of prototyping with our intake and conveyor system. Um, and 
uh, just kind of like what Adam was mentioned earlier with going for a robot that was really consistent. Uh, it's kind of a joke on our team that our robot is like a combine. <laughs> so um, that combine nature is really, it stands out in the intake in the way that the um, conveyor system that we call the candy cane goes to the shooter. Um, and there was a lot of testing and trial and error that went through with the candy cane and the conveyor system just because there's six brake beam sensors on it. So a lot of work on the programming side and collaboration with the design aspect to make it run efficiently. Okay, yeah, for sure. So um, Dan, you got anything to add? You guys had one of the best Auton scores in Michigan in terms of ball score during Auton. So what do you think went into that success and consistency of that? Lots Programmers of staying up all night. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah, like Alyssa said, there was a lot of testing that, that went into that, a lot of development. We got a, you know, our, our programming team spent a lot of time um, working on that. They uh, they were actually going for, for eight balls um, when uh, is what what was the plan and what they were we, they were working for, towards. We didn't quite get there, and they were having some issues when they got underneath the control panel. Uh, getting the last two, so uh, and then getting back on time. So we, we actually cut it down just for Milford, so they could uh, they could get the the six ball in, and and that was it was it ran really consistently. Um, really happy with that. That helped us quite a bit at Milford, um, and they we had plans a lot of plans for them to to develop even more, um, but that was that was essentially the only auto that we had. So uh, we were lucky that it, it ran that well. Yeah, I, that sounds kind of like uh, how my team ended up, right? I mean, we kind of just uh, did our thing, and we're like, well, whatever happens, happens, right? And then we just, you know, it happened to work. So um, overall, like Dan said, I, I noticed uh, specifically that you guys had one of the better autons um, in Michigan. So uh, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and take a little break here while Tyler goes ahead and talks about one of our sponsors, Striker. So Tyler, want to go, go ahead and come on? Yeah, something I really want to talk about with Striker here today, uh, you know, Times are times are strange right now, right? Lots lots going on, uh, and like most companies, you know, Striker is, is fine, trying to figure out how they can best help the community for things. So, a couple things I want to mention tomorrow: uh, we're going to have a special show uh, talking about uh, COVID nineteen responses with experts in the industry. So, we have a uh, vice president from Striker coming in, Jerry. Uh, we also have uh, a, a name that maybe some will recognize from long ago: Joe Johnson is coming in. Uh, doc, Dr. Joe is coming in to talk, and we also have. Uh, Mike Stark, our very own Mike Stark, who's also a registered nurse tomorrow. So please check that out uh, starting 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Uh, but our friends at Stryker actually have developed something super cool that I want to tell you about uh, called the Emergency Relief Bed. They are cranking out uh, – like their goal is to crank out a thousand of these per day to have ready and available uh, for people when they need them. This is something that Stryker came together and they said, you know what, you know, we're a medical uh, manufacturer, we make leading products, but what's something that we can create that's going to actually help immediately right now? And so Stryker has uh, put their minds together and come out with this emergency relief bed. And they are starting to crank these out. And I just want to just give Stryker Strike a big shout out for that. You know, of course, you can check them out uh, for employment. And they want to hire people who are in first to come work for them. But I think this is something just super cool that uh, they're finding their way to respond uh, to COVID-19. But if you're interested in uh, careers, internships, anything like that, and you actually want to work for a company who will support you being in first, go to careers.stryker.com forward slash first and go check them out. Yeah, thanks, Tyler, and uh, thanks to our friends at Stryker. Uh, I think that you know what they're doing to try and battle the COVID-19 crisis is awesome. So uh, kind of we're going to switch gears here a little bit, and uh, we're going to kind of go ahead and move into um, you know your Milford District performance and uh, how you guys did with that and um, some changes or challenges that you may have had at the event. Uh, so I know um, one thing that you guys had sent us was that you were a pound and a half overweight when you arrived. So uh, Alyssa, do you kind of want to go ahead and talk about that a little bit? Oh, that was a brutal, that was one of the <laughs> roughest moments of my time in FRC. And I mean, and that was only like a pound and a half too. So it's, yeah. It could be so worse. That, <laughs> it's fine. That's yeah. a scary thing. My heart goes out to the teams who've been more overweight. It's tough. Like, how do you even begin to decide what to cut? But for hey. us, <laughs> we got rid of our ratchet slices with the um, in our climbers. And um, on our candy cane system, we had a 90-degree uh, bevel gear dr versus planetary drive. And so that got cut, um, too. But it eventually... 
we thankfully didn't have to start Swiss cheesing things, which that robot already had a lot of holes. In I was going to say that robot's got a lot of holes in it already. <laughs> so I don't know where you can take too much from, but yeah. So we, so, we kind of had some issues with the scale at the, at the proving grounds. Um, I don't know if it was out of calibration or, or somebody was messing with us, but we, we thought we would be overweight and then we weigh it again and we'd be five pounds under we weighed again and we'd like gain two pounds and we we're like something something weird is going on here we thought we thought we'd be about half a pound under uh when we got there and of course we put it on the scale and found that you know we were a pound pound and a half over so the, the good news is we had already we had already had a plan in place okay. to figure out what we were going to do if we were over because we were worried about it um so we, we had some things that we could take off um uh, the climbers and the the pneumatics on the climber for the ratchets um, we, we had a high enough gear ratio that it wasn't going to fall. So we really didn't need them. Um, like Alyssa said, we, she, she changed the gearbox on the, on the candy cane and that, that allowed us to get, I think that was pretty much the bulk of the, of the weight that we took off. There were maybe a couple other minor things that we did, um, got ourselves under, made a couple other changes, got ourselves a little bit of cushion to, um, add some things back in if we needed to. Um, but yeah, it was kind of, we, we had a plan because we couldn't trust the scale that we <laughs> we were using in our shop so right yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah absolutely and you know it's always good to have the the backup plan so dan anything to add uh it, you guys obviously improved a lot throughout your time um and driver practice at the competitions um did your did your pit crew or drive team have any main fundamental or strategy changes that you guys implemented that you guys thought uh just took you guys to the next level um, I mean, really, I think a lot of it came with us just getting more confident with driving the robot. And I just remember our drive coach, Jim, telling us to just go at 70%. We didn't need to go more. We didn't need to push the limits and get nervous and start getting positions where we are breaking the robot. Um, and really, we knew what we were good at. We came in and we felt confident with doing the trench run, and that's what we did. Yeah, absolutely. And you guys, uh, you guys did it you know, very consistently. So, um, you know, going into, um, you know, throughout Milford, um, you know, if you go back and uh, look at, I believe our week two recap, there's a video of you guys, you know, running right into the control panel, um, you know, and popping the thing up. So um, kind of that thing. So what kind of, uh, you know, do you think that um, having the strength of that robot um, allowed you to maybe, I know you said only run at 70%, but uh, maybe push it than some other teams, uh, you know, might not have been able to? Um, I think that it was a very robust robot, and it's definitely one of the things that made us such a strong competitor at Milford. Um, really, I think a lot of it, too, had to do with the, our ability to think on our feet and react to the field around us. Like, if there were balls down on the opposite side of the field, we didn't come back to the um, player station, we'd pick up from the ground. And just, like, imp being able to improvise on the fly, I think that that was primarily what got us to be successful, not so much as figuring out, pushing the limits of the robot. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me think here. Like, there's other questions I wanted to ask. Um, so one thing that I did notice, um, you know, starting at Milford, uh, it seemed like you guys started to play um, a little bit with the kind of the far away shot, but it ended up just resulting um, to going up to the up close shot and you know further developing that. So um, kind of you guys uh, want to go on to that and you know going throughout the season, um, were you going to focus more on the up close shot or were you going to eventually try and get the trend shot? Or uh, what was kind of the thought process behind that? Well, we were we were planning for um, we always planned to have an up close shot, but I don't think we. I definitely wasn't anticipating that we would use it as much as we did. Um, we we seemed to be struggling with our shot consistency from the trench. Um, we I was anticip anticipating that we'd have a better better accuracy, um, but with the with the ball variation and just uh, just not being able to tune it in as well as we wanted to at the event. Um, the, the good thing is the drivers and the, the drive team adapted to that and, and essentially gave up on the trench shot unless they needed to and just bulldozed their way into the, to the front court uh, and took all those shots because those were, those were basically 100%. And they were actually knocking down some three-pointers from there as well. So uh, the, the good thing is they adapted to um, what we knew the robot was capable of and could, uh, you know, take advantage of, of what we kind of built in, but, but something that they hadn't really practiced yet. The, 
the, the thing that Alyssa didn't point out because she's part of the drive team is they, they had very little practice at all um, going up to the event. So the, uh, you know, they, they maybe had 20 minutes of practice with that robot. Um, our practice day was not very good at all. Um, so when they, when they went out there for the first match, that was really the first time that they had to, uh, to really feel the robot out so that they did a good job of, of doing what they could, taking advantage of what was there. Um, and then, you know, kind of going up and, and taking that, that close shot, um, cause it was given to us, uh, at that moment, I, I think throughout the rest of the season, we, that probably would have been taken away. Um, so we would have had to figure out how to take that trench yeah. and make it a little more accurate. A lot of that too, um, as soon as we were finished with our matches, we discovered that our limelight was not securely mounted to its position. So in hindsight too, we didn't know how much that was contributing to our accuracy problems. Right, I got you, okay. Um, so Dan, we do have a question from chat. Uh, you wanna go ahead and ask that? So it's from four on a good day, 2338. And it was, what was your favorite match at Milford and why? Oh man! <laughs> I think the first match was the best. The best match, because um, they I, they they really came out of the they shot out of, out of the gun really really well. Um, and I, I think if you checked our scouting data, like for ninety percent of the competition, that was like our best match and probably the best match of the of the competition uh, overall. Um, they they were really good right out of the bat, right out of the bat. And then so that was really surprising to me that that they were that good that that fast. Yeah, Alyssa? Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with Adam on that. Also, just from like the sentimental aspect of that too, that was the first match I've ever played as an operator. And it was truly awesome to be able to experience the collaboration and just what it feels like to be in a match. And to know that we had spent so much time working on a robot and to have that pay off in a match, it was one of the most rewarding and memorable feelings. Yeah, absolutely. So um, unfortunately, that's all we have for tonight. Um, you know, th I want to thank Alyssa and Adam for both coming on and thanks to everyone for hanging out with us. Uh, Fun needs your help to stay live, loud and independent. Please consider giving your support by joining Fun Nation with a subscription or bits on Twitch, becoming a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now, or just letting people in first know that this is the place to be to get the information your team needs. Don't forget to check us out on Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and live on Twitch. On behalf of my on behalf of myself, our guests Adam and Alyssa from 67, Dan, and our producer Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in and thank you to all of our moderators in chat. The next show is We the North Shallow Dive with Team 610 Crescent Coyotes. Good night. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.